today I want to introduce you to something called a bell ringer. Bell ringers are typically activities that you do at the beginning of a class, like when the bell would ring if we were in a school with a bell schedule. Um, our bell ringer is something we will do at the beginning of every single class, whether we're at school or we're remote. Um, it's very short, it's always multiple choice, um, and it's a, just a short passage to read, and most of the time it's like a paragraph long. So it's a short passage to read, and then somewhere between four and six questions. Um, once a week you'll have one that's a little bit longer, and it'll have um, somewhere between um, four and eight questions, just depending on which passage you have. And most of the time, not this week, but most of the time you'll all be doing a different passage on that, on a on a given day, um, just because I like to shake it up a little bit. Today, I'm going to go through and do the entire bell ringer with you. All you have to do is watch, and then when we're done, you will go do the bell ringer by yourself. The one I'm getting ready to give you the answers for. Now, I will say this. In a bell ringer, the questions are multiple choice, and my questions on my screen might have answers in a different order than the questions on your screen. Because that is true, it will not help you to watch this video and write down, oh, number one was A, because it might not be A when you do it in just a few minutes. What will help you is to listen to the story and to listen to why the answers are what they are, and then when you're reading the story for yourself and you're looking at the questions for yourself, it'll be super easy to remember those answers, okay? Let me show you how we're going to do Bell Ringer in this class this year. So when you log into Google Classroom, you're going to go to your ELA class because, hello, that's where we are. Okay, and this is going to be our classwork. I want it to leave me alone. Okay, so we're going to start with Bell Ringer number one. Today is Tuesday, August 18th, and there's Bell Ringer number one. And it's going to say, make sure you've watched the bell ringer video first, which is what you're watching. That's how you're getting here. And it says, I promise it'll be, it will help you a lot. It might even give you a few answers or all of them. All right. So you can click view assignment. And here it is. We are going to click on bell ringer number one. It's a Google form. And it's going to open in a brand new window. And it says, read the passage carefully. Answer the questions that follow by choosing the best answer choice. Check over your answers before submitting your assignment. Your email address will be recorded when you submit the form, and then it'll have your email address there. And here's the whole passage. I told you it was short, right? It says, follow along please. It says, ever since he was six years old, Nick had wanted to get a puppy. His parents always refused. They said he wasn't capable of taking care of a puppy. You have no idea how much a work how much work a puppy is, Dad said. You would have to housebreak the puppy, train the puppy to obey you, and groom it too. And then there's taking the puppy to the vet, playing with it and feeding it, Mom added. It's not that I'm against having a puppy, but a puppy takes up a lot of time. Nick couldn't think of a way that he could convince his parents that he was ready for a puppy. Then he got an idea. If I volunteer at the animal shelter, he thought, I'll bet mom and dad will see that I'm ready to take care of a puppy. Okay. If you understood what we just read, then we're good to go. If you have questions about what we just read, it would be a good idea to pause the video and read it again. Let's move on to the first question. Which word tells a reader most about the text while previewing it? If I just give you the word idea, does that tell you what this text is about? How about the word puppy? Can I show you something here? Puppy, 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 puppy. Do you see how many times the word puppy appear? Puppy appears in this very short passage. I'm thinking this is probably a really good answer. So I'm going to click it. I'm not going to be done yet because I haven't looked at all the answer choices. Groom. When I hear the word groom, I think of a wedding, and this passage was not about a wedding. Um, and the only time I see the word groom is in this one sentence right here. And obey. 
same kind of thing. I only see the word obey once. So which word tells the reader most about the text while previewing it? If I just glance at this, the word that jumps out to me over and over and over is puppy. And it tells me that the text was about puppy quite a bit. So I'm going to leave puppy as my answer and scroll on. What is the problem in the text? Nick's parents think that he is not capable of taking care of a puppy. Let's go back and see. Ever since he was six years old, Nick had wanted to get a puppy. His parents always refused. They said he wasn't capable of taking care of a puppy. Just gave us the answer, didn't it? That's what I love about reading. The answers are always there. You just have to go find them. It's like being a detective. So that's Nick's parents think he is not capable of taking care of a puppy. I think that's great. Now, should I just go on to the next question? Always, always, always read all the answer choices. Nick's parents think that puppies are not a lot of work. It's not that I'm against having a puppy, but a puppy takes up a lot of time, says mom. Dad says, you have no idea how much work a puppy is, so we know it's not that one. Nick is allergic to puppies. Was there, is the word allergic in the paragraph at all? No. Nick's parents think that the family should get a puppy right away. Is that what his parents think? Yeah, mom says puppies take up too much time. We're, not, we're They're always refusing. His parents always refuse to get a puppy. So we know the best answer is that they think he's not capable of taking care of a puppy. Question three. A person who volunteers is someone who, let's go back and see this. If I volunteer at the animal shelter, he thought, I'll bet mom and dad will see that I'm ready to take care of a puppy. He's volunteering at an animal shelter. Does that mean he gets a raise? No. Does that mean he's doing some work without being paid? It does. Volunteering means you do work, but you're not getting paid. You're just giving of your time. Is he volunteering at an animal shelter? Does that mean he's studying for a test? No. Volunteering at an animal shelter. Does that mean he does no work at all? Well, he's not just going to go hang out at the animal shelter and do nothing. He's going to work. He's doing that work without being paid. I'm going to choose that answer. Nick's parents say he isn't capable of taking care of a puppy. Which word or phrase means capable? So his parents say he is not capable of taking care of a puppy. He is not able to take care of a puppy. Does that make sense? It does. Let's choose it for right now, but don't go on. Nick's parents say he isn't afraid of taking care of a puppy. Is that what capable means? No. Nick's parents say he isn't angry about taking care of a puppy. It doesn't even make sense, does it? Nick's parents say he isn't interested in taking care of a puppy. Well, we know that's not true. He's very interested. So capable, notice the word able in there, means able to. That's a synonym, a word that means the same thing. What does the phrase have no idea mean? Before I read these answer choices, I want to find that phrase in the passage. Have no idea. Ever since he was six years old, Nick had wanted to get a puppy. His parents always refused. They said he wasn't capable of taking care of a puppy. You have no idea how much work a puppy is, Dad said. You have no idea how much work a puppy is. You have no idea. You do not understand how much work a puppy is. I think that is what dad's saying, that, that he doesn't get it. And does that mean he ran out of ideas? Dad ran out of ideas about how much work a puppy is. No. Uh, does that mean he has an active imagination? You have an active imagination about how much work a puppy is. No. Can't think. You can't think of how much work a puppy is. They're helping him think about it. They're naming all the different things he has to do with that puppy. So the best phrase we can replace have no idea with is you do not understand. So we're going to make that our choice. We're going to double check that we've answered all the questions. We feel good about our answers. And then you're going to click the, the word submit. Submit is a word that means turn in. Give me your work. Once you click submit, it says the response is submitted and the assignment is marked as done. And then you can view your score. When you view your score up here, it says total points. The first number is your grade. So we made a 100 
and the second number is the possible, the highest possible grade we could have made. So we did make a 100, and the highest grade we could have made was a 100. And if you'll scroll through, it tells you, it shows you, you get a check mark for all the ones that you got right. And so we made all 20 out of 20 points for each question. And we're done. And you know that, that you're done, and you've done it when it gives you your score. Now, I hope that you paid attention because what I'm going to ask you to do now is go to your Google Classroom under Tuesday for today and click on that bell ringer number one, and I want you to answer.